Hey guys, uh, day 21, uh, 30 meetings in 30 days. I was just reflecting back a couple weeks ago when I was watching that, uh, came across a, a, a video, Ron Wood, the, the guitarist uh, of the Rolling Stones, and he was uh, has been in recovery for a couple years, and um, and he sat down and, and, and was lifting people up, his friends that follow him on his page or whatever, because there's no way to get to a meeting now because of the, uh, you know, the virus going around. So the Lord put it on my heart uh, to do this. So the Lord can speak through uh, so many people at so many different times. So I uh, can credit this one to, uh, to, uh, to Ron Wood for the, this class. Now listen, if you know someone who's, uh, who's just drowning, drowning, it appears that they're drowning in addiction right now or really having a hard time or really struggling, uh, send them send them to this YouTube channel or give them my email and they can contact me and I'll, I'll, I'll call them and and encourage them and pray with them or whatever the deal is no one needs to to battle this thing on their own they can allow the Lord to come in their life and and begin that process that softening process and and, and change them from the, from the inside out so we've been going through the fruit of the spirit today we'll, we'll end the fruit of the spirit tomorrow we'll, we'll begin something else but uh, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, uh, there is no law. And we've been looking at self-control. We'll look at that again, again today. And I love how the the book it, it's uh, bookmarked with love in the beginning and, and self-control at, at the end. I mean, love everything falls from the love, but I think self-control is so important in all of these fruit fruit of the spirit um looking at the curriculum one step to freedom uh handsofhope.com if you want to look at that also uh, from calvary uh, Co costa mesa um, but another good definition of uh, for spiritual self-control is zero tolerance uh, there must be zero tolerance for sin in our lives uh, you cannot make a peaceful, coexistent pact with sin. And I, and I think that's the, the biggest danger. We just get complacent. We get settled and, and we're coexistent with, with the things that we're involved in. Uh, we cannot make a covenant with our fleshly desires. God said to do what? Kill it. Kill our fleshly desires. In Romans 13, uh, picking it up in, in uh, verse 11, it says, this is all the more urgent, for you know how late it is. Time is running out. The Apostle Paul says, wake up, for our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes and put on the shiny armor of right living. Because we belong to the day, we must live decent lives for all to see. Don't participate in the darkness of wild parties and drunkenness or in sexual promiscuity and immoral living or in quarreling and, je and jealousy. Instead, clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. See, it starts up here in your mind, and that's what leads to the sin. That's what leads to the death. Don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. You know, coddling or, or excusing fleshly desires will leave us open and vulnerable to sin, and ultimately leaving us open to its destruction. We got to bring sin where? We bring sin to the cross. We reckon it dead so that we may live it after the Holy Spirit that God placed in us at our point of salvation and inherit everything that God has promised for us. So there's where our promises are. This is prosperity. This is you, you nail those things at the foot of the cross. You bring them to God and then the, the windows and doors of blessing will, will start to happen in your life, which will bring complete victory. Uh, Paul says in Romans, uh, actually in 1 Corinthians 9, it says this, 
He says, don't you realize that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will, that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. Paul says, so I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I might dis I might I myself might be disqualified. So each step he is disciplined. He's not just punching in the air, but what he's doing is for a purpose to, to, to further the kingdom, to allow the Holy Spirit to, to work in his life. I mean, the Holy the the uh, the Apostle Paul recognized the necessity of reckoning the old man to be dead, of gear, giving zero tolerance to the flesh, allowing the Holy Spirit to, to show plainly the fruit of self-control in our life. Practice zero tolerance. Don't give the flesh an inch. Make no provision for it, put, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That means you put a block on your internet so you don't get access to pornography. That means you don't watch movies that have an MA. MA is mature audience. It should be immature audience because a believer in Christ that is mature in Christ would cast away, cast aside those things. Listen, we're all self-containing right now. What are we watching? What are we listening to? What are, what are we allowing to, to enter into our life right now? It means that you don't go to the bar. Well, the liquor stores are open. Let me go get a six pack. Let me go do this. You know, allow the Holy Spirit to reign and rule in your life. It means you don't go buy, buy the pack of cigarettes. It means do whatever it takes. Do whatever uh, it, it takes to, to glorify God. Listen, I, I was going through my phone. <clears throat> I have 3,500 songs on my phone. 30, that's a lot of songs. I, I love the, 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 the music from the 70s when I, when I was in high school. I love me some pr progressive uh, Yes and, and Floyd and, and Super Tramp and Genesis. And, and I, I, when I'm in my shop, I'm listening to those things. But you know what I've been finding? And, and this has been happening the, the last couple of years. As I'm listening to these songs, and, I, and I'll hear something in the song or I'll hear a ver verse in the song, and the Holy Spirit will say, do you really need to hear that while you're working? Do you really need to have that in your life? And I find myself day after day eliminating songs from, from, from my playlist. I'll, I'll just get rid of them. I don't need to have that come into my ear gate and, and, and be convicted by the Holy Spirit over and over. And so every day there's like another song. Got to get rid of that one. Going to get rid of this one. Going to get rid of this one. To do whatever it takes. What? Are we doing whatever it takes? Right now, I'm also in the practice of doing whatever it takes for the last few years to, to guard uh, fat and cholesterol from being in, in, in my body, to be in, in my veins, to, to help me uh, live longer, basically. So I, I'm doing whatever it takes. I don't go to Wawa and get those sizzlies anymore that were, that were killing me. Are we doing whatever it takes? Paul says in Romans 6, uh, further on, he says, do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God. For you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master. For you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of grace. So we, we're to give our whole body to God. It was bought with such a high price. We should honor God with every part of our body. What we're listening to. What we're watching. How we're speaking. Um, make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust. Instead, we walk in purity. We walk in holiness. We walk in righteousness. Tomorrow, uh, this weekend's message in 1 Timothy, in every place of worship, I want men to pray with hands, holy hands, lifted up to God, free from anger, free from 
<clears throat> con controversy. We're, we're to walk in holiness. We're to, we're to walk in righteousness. We're to walk in, in truth. We want to be walking in the Spirit at all times. The key to continuing to walk after the things of the Spirit is what? What's the key to this? It's to read the Bible every day, to get in fellowship, to pray with each other, to get your focus on, on the things of Christ, the things on heaven, and not on what's going on around us. That'll just bring you down and, 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 and bring suffering and pain into your life. We're to focus our energies on what lies ahead, not on the things that we've done in, in our past, but to read the Bible, fellowship with each other, get in their kitchens, call each other encourage each other say hey I'm really struggling today would you pray pray for me and do that as much as possible don't make excuses for your flesh don't make excuses well I did you know I just had to keep myself busy listen if you if you need something to keep yourself busy give me a call I'll find something for you to do uh, trust me I'll find something for you to do maybe that was for someone I have no idea maybe that was for me don't make excuses. Don't live after your fleshly desires. It's an empty, frustrated life. Been there, bought the t-shirt, wore the t-shirt out, bought a new one, did the same thing. It just leads to frustration and desperate, desperate times. It's not the life that God intended for you. He wants, that, he wants you to have so much more. You must be born again to live after the Spirit and fulfill the very purpose of your existence. To live in communion and fellowship with God. For every Christian, self-control over the sinful nature is mandatory. We need to receive God's love and respond to it by showing self-control as we walk according to the Spirit and not by the flesh. And I'll just close this from... Galatians 5, verse 24 and 25. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our life. Heavenly Father, that is my prayer for my friends this morning, God that they allow the Spirit, your Holy Spirit, the Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead to lead their lives, every part of their lives, God. If there's any, any, any residual sin in, in their life, God, may they bring that to you this morning, God, and may you take that from, it, from them and replace it with your goodness, your holiness. Would you, re, would you clothe them or reclothe them in your, in your righteousness, God, that righteousness that brings victory into their life. So we thank you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. I'll see you tomorrow.